hey guys my name is Femi Ojemi and welcome back to another video in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys more of an update of my hacking touch in my last video I showed you guys the things that were working and the things that were not working so in this video somebody asked me to make a video to show you all the things that I've been able to get working and how stable it is on my laptop I'm using a HP NV15 laptop it's a Core i7 7th gen processor with Intel graphics on board I've been able to get this hacking touch to a pretty stable point now um, I've got most things to work at this point. The only thing that is not working is iMessage and FaceTime. While most other things on the system works, not all of them perfectly, but most of them work and they run quite smoothly. So if you wanted to install macOS on your laptop, specifically this particular laptop, just know you can do so. I will link some videos down below in the description so that you guys can install it and try to get your laptop as close to mine as possible. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on post notifications to get notified on when I post new videos and let's get into the video. So like I mentioned earlier, the only two things that I wasn't able to get working were iMessage and FaceTime. I've tried so many many tutorials, I've gone on many forums, I've tried many YouTube videos here and there up and down just to fix iMessage or try to get it to work on my laptop. It hasn't worked at all. Tried, I don't think it works again. Maybe just for me, maybe on my particular laptop, but I've tried it so many times it hasn't worked. There are some other videos here on YouTube that claim that they can fix the problem. Some people have tried it and it has worked for them. But for others like myself, we haven't been able to fix it. I think maybe it's a Catalina problem. I don't know about Mojave. Okay, so the first thing on the list that I have gotten to work on my hacking touch is my Wi-Fi card. I am using the Intel Dual Band 7265 Wi-Fi card, the one with Bluetooth. And it's working perfectly now. Well, not entirely perfectly, but it's working most of the time. It's actually thanks to some developers on Tony Mac 86. It's a trick that these developers were able to get working for many Intel Wi-Fi cards only for Catalina. It has actually been available for months now but I didn't find out about it until like a month ago. So I tried it out and it works for my laptop and I even made a video about it. It's really simple to get working and it works almost all the time. Sometimes though when you use it, it will just shut down unexpectedly or you could be downloading something and to just like go off or you I don't know why it's like that but that's what happens. But the important thing is that it's working and I'm very happy that it's working so that I don't have to be using a USB Wi-Fi card. Sometimes those things don't work very well. They're not as fast as your internal Wi-Fi card and <sighs> dealing with drivers is not just fun at all. So I'm happy that we have this trick and this method to get our internal Wi-Fi card to work without having to go and buy a Broadcom compatible Mac OS Wi-Fi card from Amazon or somewhere else to get it working on our laptops. For HP laptops in particular, if you buy those particular chips, all those Broadcom chips, it might not even work on your laptop because the BIOS on HP blocks it blocks certain Wi-Fi cards from working on your laptop. So there's nothing you can do about it except maybe you go deep and you custom like flash your BIOS. The App Store is next. This was something I thought that was working well for me in my last video. Sometimes it will log in and sometimes I will try to download an app or log in and it won't let me to just log me out and I can't get in again. So I tried following this video on YouTube by this YouTuber called Margo Not on how to fix iMessage, FaceTime and the App Store on your hacking touch. I followed the video, iMessage and FaceTime of course did not work but for my App Store it started working and I don't know. It's working now and I don't have problems again. My webcam is also something I thought that wasn't working for me before. It was always working. I just did not know how to get it to work. My laptop in particular has two types of cameras. It has an IR camera for face detection and it works in Windows and it has this normal webcam. In my last video, the reason why I thought it wasn't working is because I needed to go into my settings or my camera or whichever app that uses my webcam to, to select the particular camera that I want to use. So if I'm on FaceTime, I'll go to my menu bar and select my, the cameras that I want to use. If I'm on photo boot, I will do the same too. And any app that requires you to use your camera, you can do so. Now this is something I was able to get to work better, but it's still not, it's not as good as what it would be on a regular Mac. And this is my sound. My audio, my speakers, it doesn't, it's not loud enough. Before in the last video, it wasn't loud enough. Like if I should play a song or play a, anything that uses audio, it does not sound as loud as when I will use it on Windows 10. It almost sounded as if my highest volume on Mac OS was my half volume in Windows 10. 
So I was having this problem and I found an updated kext. My I'm using a Voodoo HD kext on my hacking torch. So I found an updated kext on GitHub and I installed it. I even made a video about it. I installed it on my laptop and it started working well. And I was able to get my volume somewhat better. It's still not as loud as the way it is in Windows 10. It's still kind of dim. It's not it's not punchy enough. That's my problem. It's not loud enough. But I don't really care. I can connect my laptop to a Bluetooth speaker and most of the time when I'm editing, I use my headphones on so I don't really care. Now onto my touchpad gestures. This was something that I wanted so badly to work on my laptop because I just liked the ease of using your gestures on your trackpad to get some things done for you like going into um, app expose or showing your, your desktop or launching your launch pad. So I tried many, many fixes. I went on many websites, many forums, tried many YouTube videos. None seemed to work at all until I found a solution. I can't remember where I found the solution, but I did find it and I was able to get mine working. It's actually very simple. I made a video about it and I'll link it below again. After doing it, all my gestures started working. My two finger gestures, my three finger gestures, four finger gestures, everything just works. Even force touch works on it, but not the same way it will work on Mac, on a real Mac. It's not as smooth as a real Mac will be. I've used a real Mac before. The gestures are just really smooth and easy to move, but on this is okay it's it's manageable but it's not as smooth as you think it would be um but i'm using it like that and it's okay sometimes i'll try to show my i'll try to use that pinch out or pinch in gesture that one in particular does not work to show my desktop or to launch my launch pad to launch your launch pad you have to pinch in with three fingers and to or show your desktop you have to pinch out with three fingers or so um, this particular gestures I find to be the hardest to get to work or to work smoothly. Okay, the last thing on this list is the brightness buttons. This was something that took me the longest to and like stressed me for hours and hours and days and weeks to get working until I finally did and up to now I do not know how I was able to get it to work. I don't know how. So if you have if you have problems with your brightness buttons and you need to fix it, please don't ask me. I do not know how to fix it at all. I just don't know how it worked. It just worked. But yeah, in my previous video, they weren't working and there's only the brightness slider I was able to get. I have a video on that one also too. And I can't really remember what I used to fix it because I can't remember. But I used a dozen of YouTube videos and some forums. The ones I remember, I'll try to link below in the description so that you can follow them. How I know I don't know how to fix it is that there was a time I actually lost all my files on my hacking touch and I had to install macOS again. So I had to start fixing all those things from scratch, but I already knew how to do, I already knew how to fix most of them. But when it came to fixing the brightness buttons again, I tried it, I did all the things I did before, it did not work. I tried, 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 still didn't work. Luckily enough for me, I backed up my old EFI folder and I was able to go and get some patch files that I did in the process of trying to fix my brightness buttons and that's how it works. So right now, I have backed up that patch file on the internet in case I ever lose it so that I will just um, put it again in my EFI. I will leave the patched file in the description below if you have the same laptop and you can't get your brightness buttons to work soon. Other than those, those were all the problems I had from my previous video that I was able to get working on my hacking touch now. Still, the only problem I have is iMessage and FaceTime. If anybody has any fix for both of them, please let me know down below in the comments. I don't know how to fix them. I've tried so many videos. It just doesn't work for me. What I've just noticed is that hacking touching can be very stressful and at the same time it's very fun too. Um, it's never always going to be perfect for you, for everybody it's different and some people always ask me questions, how do you fix this, how do you fix that, I don't know. If I make a video on how to fix something on your hacking touch, I do not know how it will turn out for every single person because every laptop is different. It's not like a Mac that most of the laptops are the same so it's easier to fix a problem for many of them but now many of us are trying to run mac os which is not really compatible with many windows laptops in the first place so whenever i know how to fix something on my hacking touch and i found the solution i will share it with you guys i think i've fixed most of the problems on this hacking touch and i've gotten to a stable point now that i'm comfortable it does everything i needed to do it does my editing for me which is the main reason why i installed mac os and my browsing i can browse I can use the internet, sort of, it works, and it just works fine for me. It's at a stable point for me now. About the latest Mac OS Big Sur that Apple just announced in their latest keynotes, I don't know how 
that will translate into hacking touching in the future i don't know what the future holds for hacking touches because as apple said in their keynotes they are moving away from intel processors into their own processors and one of the main reasons the hacking touch world even exists is because it's based on intel cpus many of our computers use intel cpus and that's why we can install mac os on our computers but apple has a lot of computers already that's still running on intel processors and their latest mac pro 2 which is so expensive is running on intel processors so i think it's going to take a while for them to make that transition from the intel processors into their own processors so um, i'm not that worried right now so because of that transition time i don't think that catalina will be the last version of mac os that we will be able to run on hacking touch systems unless developers and programmers still find a way to make hacking touches work even after they have fully transitioned into their processors so that was it for this video feel free to check down below my other videos concerning mac os in hacking touch systems if this video was helpful give it a like subscribe to see more of my videos turn on post notifications to get notified on when i post new videos thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye